I came to Christ in 1996. You know, the Lord met me at a club, a nightclub. I remember going home the next day just crying out to the Lord and so happy. And my first day at work, that Monday morning, I shared Jesus with the mailman. Um, didn't know much about what I was saying, but I did tell him that Jesus loved him and God had a plan for his life and that Jesus cared about him and, and that he died for his sins. And from that point forward, I just started sharing Christ wherever I went, really going into some really um, horrific neighborhoods and where there was poverty and gun violence and, and a lot of single moms. The Lord had started giving me a heart for um, the poor and the broken and the downtrodden. Paul told Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. And I think in a community where God affords us opportunity to share the gospel, the power of God can change their lives. And in turn, their community can be changed and allow them to be something different that they could never dream of. There's so many needs that only the gospel can change because that transforms the person. So in the urban community, we need more of the gospel preached that Jesus was crucified, that he was buried, and that he rose from the dead on the third day. That's the good news. And that he died for the sin of the world. And if you want to invite him into your life and receive him by faith, you know, you can have a new life in Christ. If anyone be in Christ, he's a new creation. And to me, that's the beautiful thing about the gospel. It doesn't have to be weird. It doesn't have to be this yelling at a person. It's just coming, you know, being led by the Spirit and tell a person, hey, by the way, Jesus died for you. He loves you. He got a plan for you. You know, while we're yet sinners, God died for the ungodly. I was an ungodly person that he died for, and he died for you too. He so loved the world that he gave his son in our place. And just sharing that, I think it's almost like any other thing we do. If you exercise a muscle, it strengthens. And I think the more you share Christ, the more you realize that it is Christ who will save the person and not us. I think prayer is the number one tool to see lost people saved. I was raised by a single mom of six children. You know, um, my mother loved Jesus. You know, as you know, I grew up, I watched her pray. One of the things that she always prayed for was provision. And the Lord has been laying on my heart more and more this heavy vision for single moms. Um, you know, particularly moms who are working moms who work and at the end of the week they still struggle financially. It's not because they're lazy, not because they don't want to be good moms. How do we come alongside those moms? As Jesus said in the Beatitudes, let your light so shine before men that they could see your good works and your good deeds and ultimately God to get the glory out of it. And so that's going into the world and being among common people. You know, so I don't think that we should always anticipate that everybody will come to us. I think we have to go to them. There has to be a great emphasis on them knowing the God of the Bible through the Word of God. And I think one of the most important things is them being taught expositionally, verse by verse teaching, expository teaching. I think that the Word of God can speak more than the pastor can himself, and that a person should grow in the Word and in the knowledge of God through the Bible being taught and explained simple. And not only learn the Word of God, live it out in their lives and that they can be a person who's being conformed into the image of God's dear Son through the Word of God.